roast them. Roast them. Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to beautiful Horsetooth Reservoir in Fort Collins, Colorado. And most importantly, welcome finally to the new Nissan Frontier. After more than a decade, we finally have a new Frontier. And in this video, I'm gonna take you on a full tour and drive of the 2022 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X with the V6. I'm really excited we finally have a new Frontier to bring to you guys. And a huge thank you to Nissan for getting us this vehicle. It's a pre-production prototype, so there might be a few little things on here. I haven't really seen any that might not be fully production ready. And I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've seen a whole bunch of other Frontier coverage. So everyone's gonna be kind of going through the same thing. We'll touch on the exterior and interior design, but what I really wanna focus on in this video is how this drives on the pavement, on the dirt, and maybe we can even find some uh, a little bit more aggressive off-road trails just to see how it handles the more aggressive terrain. We're lucky to be filming this car at home in Colorado on roads we know and love. So let's go on a full tour. First of all, the exterior color. Can I just say, I personally think this is the best looking pickup truck ever, uh, regardless of you know anything from like an F450 Super Duty Dually, love those. But I really love this new design language, especially in this tactical green metallic with the Pro 4X trim. This is a maxed out Frontier, so let's just go through pricing really quick. The example that we're looking at here is $44,000. $315. That has everything on it. It's 37 grand base. Then it has the tech pack, pro convenience pack, and the pro premium package, which basically give you all of the safety systems like adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning. It will give you a spray and bed liner, the outlets, kind of everything you would want, heated seats, heated steering wheel, trailer hitch, remote engine start. And then the premium pack um, basically gives you that banging fender audio system, sunroof, things like this. Really nice to have. Um, basically, it's as maxed out as you can get a Pro 4X. Now, interestingly, when you look at base price of 37, pretty incredible pricing, especially if you start looking at its nearest competitor, the Tacoma TRD Pro is like 44 grand base. So this maxed out version is the same price as a base TRD Pro um, Tacoma. However, uh, that does come with some more standard equipment. Really, this falls in between in terms of capability, sort of a TRD off-road Tacoma and a TRD Pro. This is priced right in the middle. It's positioned right in the middle. Its capabilities, I imagine, are right in the middle. And so no crazy long travel suspension here or some, you know, wider fenders like you might get in a TRD Pro Tacoma, but it's priced accordingly. And I think it's actually fitting the perfect need in the market. In terms of size and positioning, driving this car around, when I take you for a drive, you'll see it's compact, mid-sized truck, but it fits in drive-throughs. You can daily drive it. It's so much easier to drive than like F-150 or Ram or something like this. So I love the size. Let's look under the hood really quick before we go around to the rest. So just gonna pop the hood right here. And I hope I've found the latch already. Yes, I have, check a look. So the hood doesn't open very far on this. That's it literally as high as it can go. It seems like you can pop the struts off and it will extend farther, or you could always remove the hood if you're doing more service yourself, but interesting. Um, 3.8 liter V6 in this particular one, nine speed torque converter automatic. You can spec the Frontier in a whole bunch of different trims from four by two, four by four, long cab, or I should say long bed, short bed, this one's short bed, quad cab, the only engine available, 3.8 liter V6, 310 horsepower, and some amount of torque I'll put right here. But up here at altitude, I will say, we're at just a mile above sea level. It needs a little bit more punch. We'll talk about it when we drive it. Styling wise, soak it in as you will. I think, again, like I had mentioned, this looks really good. You got the Hankook Dynapro AT2 tires, awesome tire, not crazy aggressive, but perfect for this sort of mixed on-road and light off-roading that you'll see. The Pro 4X gets you a whole bunch of skid plates down the middle as well. Interestingly, now you can get a trim called the Pro X, which gives you all of the styling of the Pro 4X, but in rear wheel drive and a couple less skid plates. I'm not sure if I would go for that. I think I would personally go for one equipped just like this particular spec right here. They also have a really nice gray. I think there's 11 colors that you can get this in. They're all pretty nice, which is 
I think, kind of a unique thing in this segment. Really love all this new colors that manufacturers are doing. Around the back, you get these chiseled tail lights. Take a look at this. Nice housings back here as well. It does have blind spot monitoring um, in the mirror. So I don't know where the sensors are, but they got to be somewhere back here. It also has safety sensors. So if you're about to back up into something, it will slam on the brakes for you, which I think is pretty neat. Tailgate, well damped. Look at this. Nice. You have little spots for like almost like a makeshift cup holder. Take a look at this. Pretty rugged surface. Spray in bed liner and one of the option packages here. And then you also get in one of the option packages on this truck, 110 volt, I believe 400 watt continuous uh, power outlet. Now you do need the engine running for that, but that seems like a pretty good 400 watts is enough to run a speaker system if you're out tailgating with some friends or to keep a refrigerator or, you know, one of those portable refrigerators cold. That's cool. And it's certainly enough, take a look here, to haul around your Starbucks, of course. Um, some other nice things, you have some lights in here as well. I don't know if you can see here, maybe there is one on this side right here. There's some LED lights that do get pretty bright. And at night, that's super helpful. This track system is also cool. We've seen this in other Nissan products like the Titan, but if you loosen this all the way, you can slide these lockers forward and back and then clamp it down. I'm gonna insert a clip right now where we're actually gonna be using this truck to help one of my colleagues move. So let's insert the clips of what that looks like and then we'll pick up the review. Timon, what do you say? Using it as a work truck? Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> We've put like three things in it, uh, but a queen size mattress, some other things. We gotta strap it down, of course, before we go on the road, but seems to have taken everything pretty well. And it means that these little mid-sized trucks are actually super practical. Lexi, how do you feel about the Nissan Frontier? Feels good, feels really helpful. Okay, yeah. that's right. All right, well, let's uh, strap it all down and call that a thorough test of the load carrying capabilities. What do you say, Alyssa? Get her done. Jumping in the back seat of the Pro 4X Nissan Frontier. Here we go. So I have the front seat set exactly where I would sit. I'm six foot one. And I have to say for a mid-sized truck, plenty of room. You know, when you get in these new full-size trucks, F-150, Ram, Silverado, even Tundra, even uh, Titan, you have tons of rear leg room. Here though, plenty for like short trips. So that, that's leg room sorted. And you also have nice door pockets or seat pockets, I should say, for both driver and passenger. That's unique, that's cool. However, headroom is a little tight. Uh, if I put my head back a little bit, you'll see the roof is scalloped a bit. So as long as I, I sit upright, my head can go here. But then the angle of the backrest is a little far forward. So I feel like for a long trip, I wouldn't want to sit back here. For short trips around town though, yeah, absolutely. You're gonna put a car seat back here, that's totally fine. Nice center armrest with two beefy big cup holders. That seems pretty sturdy. So definitely a fan of that for sure. Also, you have USB-C and USB-A here. And then also, also another 400 watt, 120 volt NEMA 515 wall outlet. So we're in this very awkward phase, which I think is funny, where we're not sure if we should install, or, or manufacturers aren't sure if they should install USB-A or USB-C. Some cars have only A, some cars have C. Here in Nissan, I think it's taken the correct approach for the time and given you both options. Got it like that. Oh, one last thing, take a look here. Little latch and you have a manual sliding little uh, window. You also have a light back here, which is working now. <laughs> and that's a nice LED light. Again, these are little things that like pre-production, I think are gonna solve. So that's on, yeah. We'll just chalk that up to this being a prototype. <laughs> Nice door handles, by the way, as well. Take a look at this. Oh, and um, time in behind the camera. Would you let me out? Cause the uh, child locks on. Inside the front of the cab, well, very interesting. First off, I love the seating position. So the seat height adjustment is only one adjustment up and down. You can't pivot the bottom, for example. Backrest, all power in this particular one, but the passenger seat is manual, I do have to point out. Doesn't seem like there's any lumbar adjustments anywhere. Oh wait, what's this here? Maybe a lumbar, maybe something. Yes, it is. Take a look at this. I don't know if you can see over here. There's a little lever that's a manual lumbar control. That's quite interesting. Uh, sitting here in the cab, adjusting the steering wheel is odd. So you have a up and down, so a tilting wheel, but no telescopic wheel. This is a 2022 $44,000 vehicle. 
that does not have a telescoping wheel. That to me is crazy. I can't remember the last time I've been in a vehicle without it. And it could actually benefit from it. If the steering wheel was closer, I think it would be a little bit nicer for sure. In terms of the buttons and switches, it's actually laid out better than most Nissans. We always use the uh, term where someone just throws up buttons and they end up in random places around the interior. And Nissans in the past have always had this, but I would say with the Frontier, they've started to make a more holistic, smart design package of everything here. So first of all, you have heated seats high and low, a little bit old school, but it works. Heated steering wheel on and off, parking sensors, and then your heated seat for the right side. Again, USB-C, USB-A. Your climate controls just above that make sense. Very simple. You have automatic dual zone, no sync function, but you can adjust both so they match the same temperature on both sides. I will say that the uh, brightness of this display here is quite dim and a little bit glary, especially if you have the sunroof option. Sometimes it's hard to see what your temperature is. Now I can turn that uh, turn our headlight uh, control off and that will brighten it up, but it still is a little bit hard to read here. Um, but I did want you to at least see that wasn't in the brightest setting. Above that, we have our, I believe, nine inch infotainment uh, center here. Apple CarPlay is going to be how I would suggest you use this system. It's fine. Um, the system doesn't really do too much. It does have built in navigation, which is great. But what I like to do is plug my phone in, CarPlay this thing up, get the Fender audio system going. And so for the most part, you just get all your settings set here and then you CarPlay it. That's how I drive most Nissans. That's how I think most people do when I kind of look into their cars in traffic and whatever, I can see them using CarPlay. So based off of my research, that's what you'll do. Interestingly, I've taken this car to the Nissan dealer today and we just had a, a, a Nissan employee actually come up and see this for the first time in our little filming spot here in Fort Collins. And Everyone has been asking about a 360 degree camera. Why? I have no idea, but that's like the big thing. So here it is. You have a very poor quality, I would say extremely poor quality display here, 360 degrees. While the quality may not be that great, it's useful. I can see Lexi standing around back here on the back right of the car. I can see uh, everything around, very little blind spot. And so the point of these cameras are to see if you're gonna hit anything. And for that, it's functional, no question. And then I believe if I put it in drive, we will get the front camera. And if we put it in reverse, we get the rear camera right there. And so that makes sense, intuitive, works great. I don't know if you'd need really anything more. It's just not impressively high quality. Uh, coming around to the steering wheel, I mentioned that it tilts, uh, not telescopes, but that's fine. Indicator socks feel premium. The buttons here on the screen directly out of Titan. So you have this sort of fine, uh, not a fine grain, sort of this grained leather. It's not the nicest leather that they put in like things like the Rogue, for example. So a step down in leather quality there. And then piano black that gets all fingerprinty. Not super into the steering wheel, if I'm honest. I wish they had taken the steering wheel out of the Rogue, which I think is a great steering wheel, um, much uh, narrower in the middle, and then more accessible controls and buttons on either side with the four square um, sort of controls. Here though, this is what they use in their truck models, and it's functional, so you can change the source of your music, you can uh, go up and down in your music uh, track playlist, you can adjust your volume, which is a little weird because it's left and right on this little toggle here. Normally it's up and down on some cars. Again, something you totally get used to over time. You have your cruise control and your adaptive cruise control settings here on the right, three distance controls. And we'll talk about when we drive it a little bit more, of course. On the left-hand side, there's a towing mode, there's your trip reset, there's cargo lamps to put the light on in the bed. You can turn your um, your uh, bed lights on and off, your uh, power outlets on and off. You have hill descent control adjustments, traction control, and your rear diff lock all down here. It actually comes up with the words physically diff lock on the screen, not just the logo. I think that's the first car I've ever seen that. You also have a 12 volt outlet right up here in the dash, a fairly sizable glove box. I would say that's you know, more than acceptable. And overall, you know, when you're sitting in this car and you have sort of your cabin, I have enough room for my left elbow to go up on the door. That's always been an issue in mid-sized trucks. I don't feel cramped. Plenty of headroom here, of course, again, six foot one. It's a great cabin, great place to spend time, great place to go for a trip. And um, actually driving, it's really cool. So let's do that. And we'll talk more as we drive this thing around. Well, the weather's not cooperating with us. 
<laughs> um, Timon's with us. You guys know Timon. He's usually behind the camera, but he'll be joining us in the evaluation. And this is the part that, you know, I really like to focus on in these reviews. A lot of reviewers will go around and point this, that, and the other thing out. That's awesome, really cool. But I think we can really weigh in with how the truck drives. Right. What do you think about the truck overall before we get into driving it on a good back road? Um, it does what it's supposed to do. Does what it's supposed to do. It, it looks, looks good. great. Looks the so green good. is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I like the wheel combo. Could use a little bigger tire. And it's on uh, Hankook uh, AT2s. meteor off-roady focused tire yeah well I think this sits somewhere in between the Toyota TRD off-road and the pro right and it's priced appropriately I mean this is a maxed out one for 44 7 which is where the TRD pro starts with no options so you're right up in there no manual in the frontier though well, I don't think you'd want a manual anyways really I mean I had the manual Jeep and that was awful well true but uh, so our colleague Ed who does a lot of writing for us uh, he just bought a manual Tacoma because it was like one of the last trucks you can buy with a manual and he like custom ordered it and wait for it but it's not you it's not like an enthusiast manual yeah, I, don't under, I just don't understand the point of a manual pickup truck Okay, well, let's go through the engine and transmission while we're on the topic. So, 3.8 liter V6 with 310 horsepower. And, Timon, will you read the foot-pounds of torque? It's at the top of that document, I believe. Uh, 281. Pound-feet of torque. Keep in mind, we're at 5,000 feet of elevation. So, let's launch it. Everyone hold on tight. <laughs> hold on tight. So coming to a stop, we're going to turn the wipers down a little bit. Rain's letting up. Should we do a little brake boost or just nail it off the line? Just nail it. Just nail it. Okay, a little bit of wheel spin. Upshift at 6,000. 40 miles an hour. 6,500 on the 2-3 shift. And still wide open. 6,700 on that shift. 75 miles an hour. And we're up over 80. Five-ish, allegedly, <laughs> kilometers. <laughs> so, wasn't a rocket ship. No, but I also, I mean, you don't expect a V6 at altitude to be a rocket ship. An NAV6. Now, yeah. I hope someone makes a supercharger kit for this. I bet they will. I'm sure someone will. Uh, great engine, though. Very smooth. Sounds okay. Uh, you know, no, nothing really bad, nothing exciting. Right. Uh, but certainly plenty of performance to just move it along in everyday situations. So we're on a back road, like on a really good back road. What are we doing with this thing on a back road? Yeah, make sure it doesn't tip over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's see. So I got it in manual shifting mode. The shifter's the wrong direction, by the way. Uh, torque converter automatic, thankfully no CVT. I'm glad I don't think they would do that in a truck anyway. But what we're going to do is our driving review. This is obviously going to be our performance driving review get it, as we get tires squeal around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and then we are going to take this car on a trail, assuming it's open and not closed due to fire damage. And then, oh, ho, ho, then we are going to take it out in the highway and the city and just see how the truck drives in different environments. I will say, I won't spoil the highway section, but we just took this on the highway and very it, impressive. It was quite smooth. Smooth, quiet, really <laughs> nice, like really nice, like way nicer than a truck deserves to be. So we'll get into that stuff in a bit. So Pro 4X, so we have the off-roady tires. We're not really set up for, you know, this isn't like a sport truck version, but um, also, take a look at this truck coming down the road here. <laughs> that thing is beefy. <laughs> and this thing's beefy too. <laughs> All right, so we're going to continue up uh, the road here, I believe, heading to a trail. Yeah. So, performance, acceleration, we've been through. Good. Uh, steering, heavy, and a slow steering rack. Yeah, I thought at low speed, it was like not having any power steering. It kind of feels a little bit old school 
and it's a little bit hard to turn and the steering ratio is pretty slow so when you're pulling into a parking spot you gotta like crank 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 and then it doesn't even have that much lock on a back road though all, what i'm noticing of that is you really got to put in quite a bit of steering to just get this thing to go around the corner so you're constantly working the wheel to me that's actually kind of annoying because the steering wheel doesn't come close enough towards me and therefore i kind of feel like i'm in bus driver mode here <laughs> so steering fine no one's really going to care who's yeah. buying this uh transmission though very interesting now we've sampled other nissan nine speed transmissions uh for example in the pathfinder and in the tundra no that's the toyota one why am i blanking on the pickup truck version titan titan thank you i was <laughs> i was thinking tundra competitor and great transmissions really happy with the tuning and all of those however here i would say i'm the most disappointed with the tuning yeah it's a little sluggish it just it almost feels like it has 200,000 miles and it's a little slushy <laughs> yeah. getting into the gear you know what i mean when it kind of just like slurs that gear shift like you go up a sh up a shift and it's just yeah, it kind of seems like it's just protecting itself from it slipping yeah so it just feels a little bit slushy i would say and is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't really know, but it just doesn't feel as crisp as other Nissan transmissions, and I'm curious as to why they made this a little bit less aggressive in the shifting. Compared to Toyota's transmission, though, in like a Tacoma, far better. You know, those that thing is just a weird experience driving a Toyota because it always tries to drop the revs back down. The manual shifting in a Tacoma makes no sense because you get this like S four s3 mode and then it always shifts this at least is manual mode yeah it's, it's, and it holds the red yeah, line say. yeah so if you're into keen driving instantly and you're not looking at a manual this is the one i would get uh just based off of the transmission and it's not even that good of a transmission right it just I think the best part is that it just holds the revs. Yeah, it holds the revs. That's the best part. And it the engine doesn't sound strained at Redline either. Take a listen. Well, let's let's hit second so we're not flying by this all this crowd of people. Here we go. Fuel cutoff, 7,000 RPM. <laughs> Sounds fine. <laughs> and it's a nice rev limiter too. It kind of just falls into place nicely. A lot of whitewater raptors going on around here. So in terms of hustling it around a corner, I would say the truck feels controlled traction control is you know you can hear it kick in here and there yeah, but works works, <laughs> works but it doesn't get in the way and you can of course turn it off you can lock the diff but only at low speed and yeah i would say you know it's not a performance car we're not doing a performance review but let's just kind of accelerate out of this corner traction control of course but it's fine a little on the way there but is it on yeah yeah you get a little little rear angle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, more than acceptable. So, pretty fun. Let's take it off-road because it's not a track mountain carver. But a lot of people with these trucks do drive the mountains. Yeah, exactly. You throw their bikes in the back or whatever they need. And it definitely will you can get haul you to your around. house quickly. Yeah, you can haul this thing up a mountain if you need to. <laughs> Let's go off-roading, hopefully, as long as the trail's open. Take my, watch my front bumper here. Let's check the approach angle. Build a little step, build 
build the trail, we're up. Let's continue. <laughs> I can't believe we made it up that hill. That was gnarly. And now we're kind of going through this. Oh, this is impossible. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> this looks totally impossible. Or does it? Go around the outside, take a look. Plug in the outside. Gentle speed, holy shit! <laughs> oh, a little poo came out there! <laughs> Alright, trail rated. I thought it was going to tip over, that was amazing. Did you see it? Yeah. That was great. I knew you had that. Okay, well. That was, that was interesting. It's, it's, it's even more interesting because this is like a one of one prototype. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. Man, this thing's a freaking mountain goat. I'm impressed. The breakover angle's awesome. This is like nothing for it now. Look at this. Yes. Climbing its way through. Man, they couldn't have put the rocks in the worst spot. And I mean they as in earth. <laughs> earth. <laughs> you see that like rock right on that breakover yeah. point that'll just eat your oil pan on a normal non-qualified off-roader? This is a trail. Yeah, I don't think my sprinter that. could do this. No chance. It wouldn't yeah. even make it up that first level. Well, hill. it would tip over for sure. Yeah. Watch the paint. Expert trail. <laughs> Some idiot just did it in a Nissan Frontier. With no off-roading experience. With zero off-roading experience, actually. Yeah, all right. So now, crawl up this thing. I just know thumbs on the outside of the wheel. Come on, baby. Okay. Four low. We need... I'm going to just push all the buttons again. <laughs> all right, let's go. Look at that, lock the dip instantly. Yeah, just like it's, it's so easy. You just hit some buttons and then it goes wherever you want. seen this yet but I have my front camera and this surround view and I can kind of see my wheels are going it's not great definition but it's pretty nice. <laughs> let's jump on the highway okay. Roast them. Roast them. Yeah. Man, this thing actually, I think we opened it up a little bit. Yeah. Because it's failing real quick now. Yeah, the transmission seemed faster. <laughs> yeah. I, maybe it just needed to like, uh, you know, have a bit of a hard drive. Yeah. Now it's got all the gunk <laughs> idling around for the last 1,500 miles. I don't know. But that felt pretty good acceleration. Yeah. We are on the highway in the Frontier Pro 4X right after driving it off-road, which was very impressive then we came down the mountain in a spirited manner <laughs> and that was very impressive and the brakes held up yeah. way better than any mid-sized truck competitor brakes so, ranger boils over no time this is like and the body roll was almost not there i'm very overall impressed and a lot of it has to do with the lack of vibration and weird sort of truck shake that you get 
coming to the cab and it's because of these new hydraulic and some bushings and a whole bunch of stuff. I, whatever they did, trickery worked. <laughs> um, they say 80% less vibrations transfer compared to the previous Frontier, which I'm surprised it's not more. I mean, I'm happy it's there and I wouldn't expect anything less. Right, I mean, I would just say it's by far the best driving mid-sized truck. Yeah, because I didn't, personally did not like the Ranger that much. No, I agree. I thought the Ranger was flawed in many ways. And this, to me, is a far superior vehicle. Now, that had a lot more torque. Yeah. But we're not talking about the Ranger. We're talking about this, <laughs> which now we're on the highway. I'm sitting on adaptive cruise control. Let's just bring it up to, I don't know, 75 miles an hour. It's accelerating for us. Um, first off, noise. We are on one of the loudest sections of pavement in our entire northern Colorado area. And, and this is. is one of the quietest really? also. Makes it even quieter. I know. One of the quietest driving experiences I've experienced out of any car. And it's smooth, too. Super smooth. You don't get a lot of shake. Tracks straight. I mean, I don't know how it can be this good here, <laughs> this good on a back road. And I, we're not, like, I, I'm not really a Nissan guy. Yeah, like, I, I would prefer to want the Tacoma over this. Right. But it's hard to, like, prefer to want a Ranger or Tacoma over this. Um, adaptive cruise control slowing us down. We have three distance settings here. One, two, and three. Right now we're on two. Seems to keep a nice distance. Slows you down in time. Big miss by Nissan though. Can you guess what it is? Uh, doesn't break for you. Okay, that's one. So if you're going downhill and you have your speed, let's just say set at 40 miles per hour on cruise control, it will just coast. And then you have to brake yourself and then turn um, that cruise turns, control on. Cruise Again. control off. Well, it turns yeah. it off, but then you have to turn it back on. Right. So that's weird. And the Titan did the same thing. Uh, but it'll slow down for a car in front. So it's like the system has the capability to slow the car down, but only does it when an object's in front of you, not if you're accelerating downhill. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, secondly, big miss, no pro pilot. Yeah, that's, that's, I found that surprising. What is this, 2021 or 22? This is a 22. Right. That's, I mean, it's been around it's, since 2017, It right? should be standard, honestly. It should be standard. And, you know, like, it's a great driver assistance system. Put it here in the tracks. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not fully autonomous, so you just... No, it's just level two driver assistance. Yeah. But it's great for taking the long drives out. I know people who drive these mid-sized trucks for miles and miles and miles. And that would be such a game changer. Because this has lane departure warning where it just beeps at you if you hit a line. Right. But I turn that off. <laughs> because it's not it doesn't help you at all. Yeah, it just, it just it's beep, like, beep, hey, you're, beep, beep. you're moving. It's like, yeah, yeah, really, I didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> so that's a miss. Uh, other than that, we're going to do a separate video testing this vehicle's MPG. Uh, so stay tuned. That will come after the full review. But if you have to munch miles and sometimes climb a mountain... It's your car right here. It's your car right here. Let's take it in the city, maybe uh, load it up with some stuff, do like some work trucky things. We'll film that actually tomorrow uh, with uh, Lexi's stuff in the back and we'll call it a review. But so far, like... Very impressed. I came into it not expecting much. Yeah, I was like, oh, another Frontier. Another Frontier, <laughs> but seriously, like, and the more time I spend with it, the more time, the more things I find that I like it. Now this isn't like our full in-depth review. We'll do one at some point, but this is, you know, we only have the car for a couple days. It's our first day. I've driven it just today. How many miles? Let's see, 150 miles or so. And it's been just great, 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 great. I want to do more off-roading. <laughs> Not your first time in the Frontier. Or is it? Nope, been it, in it a couple oh, days Oh, that's right, we took it to Ikea. Yeah, this is moved. Lexi, by the way. Yeah. Hi. Lexi does our marketing. And uh, we're going to talk about how this drives in the city. So yesterday, I wanted to add to our highway portion. We took this on like a 110-mile round trip blast down to Denver and back up here to northern Colorado. Mm -hmm. And it was great on the highway, I thought. I had you guess our speed, and we were going a lot faster than you thought. Yeah, for sure. It was super smooth. Yeah, very smooth, very isolated, unbelievably quiet. Um Actually, fairly good fuel economy. It wasn't a specific test, so I won't mention what it was, but for a mid-sized truck, high teens, not bad for how quickly we were going. Um, but now we talk about what it's like in the city. You know, the reason to get a mid-sized truck, I think, over something like an F-150 or a Silverado or, you know, a Titan, something like this, we're just gonna go, is uh, your maneuverability around town. 
It's just so much easier to park and maneuver into stuff, except it's not. Do you know why it's not? <laughs> no. Okay, the steering ratio, remember oh, yeah. when we were trying to park this thing? Yeah. It doesn't, the wheels don't turn. Limited. Limited front axle, uh, you know, sort of angle of attack on the front wheels doesn't have good turning radius. Uh, also, the steering ratio itself is pretty slow, and that's common of trucks, but yeah, I would say the one real true weak link of this is the uh, steering ratio. Secondly, uh, third gear makes a squealing sound. It almost sounds like the police are coming every time we shift into third gear, just a little and I'm like, is that a siren or is that the transmission? And it could be that this is a pre-production prototype truck and it's been, you know, beat on since the day it was brand new. But, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see for sure when we get a production one to test. But I will say at least third gear, a little noisy on this one. Uh, secondly, engine is more than potent around town. I do also have to mention at like 85 miles an hour, it's only turning 2000 RPM on the highway. Around town though, silky smooth. Sometimes the shifts are a little lazy though. It's a little slushy and we noticed this in the canyons. Timon and I took this up, uh, shredding up a canyon the other day and noticed the shifts were a little slushy. It does translate into town, but you put your foot down and eventually it gets moving but needs a supercharger. You said it felt slow. Yeah, I, th I thought it felt a little weak. You thought it felt weak. Mm -hmm. Okay, she drives a CRV. <laughs> okay, yeah, well. <laughs> but you claim that's faster. Uh, well, yeah, it does have a sport mode, so when you put it in sport mode, it can get it. Yeah. <laughs> At least I think so. Well, uh, sounds like when we get one of these where we can spend more time, we're drag racing it against your CRV. Yeah. Perfect. So anyway, in the city, stuff like this, what we're doing now, it's the perfect size, great visibility, blind spot monitoring helps quite a bit, and good seating position, very comfortable, very quiet. And aside from those few little niggles, which I think mostly come up in city driving and tight maneuvering, uh, it's good. Anyway, there's your Nissan Frontier Pro 4X full review. We've driven it in the city, on the mountains, on the highway, off-road, and we've done a full interior and exterior tour, one of our most longest reviews that we've done, if that makes any sense. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this car. Hopefully you enjoy us bringing you this coverage early. And a big thank you to Nissan for letting us get this car ahead of the full reveal and everything. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy it and talk to you for the next video. Maybe not for, what am I supposed to say? See you on the next one is what yeah. I always say. See you on the next one. Bye -bye.